Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the review for this D-Link AC3200 uh, high performance Wi-Fi router and uh, before I give, uh, talk about the router and give you my pros and cons, let's have a look at this router and in terms of looks, as you can see it looks very unique, it looks actually like a drone or a spaceship rather than a router and it's uh, based on the uh, AC3200 standard, that means it has two AC uh, Wi-Fi bands uh, both are at 1300 megabits and for the 2.4 gigahertz band it is uh, providing speeds up to 600 megabit so a total of uh, 3200 megabit and as you can see uh, this is the router the thing is that these antennas we have six antennas and these antennas are actually attached uh, so you can't uh, actually remove the antennas and as you can see the router actually looks really cool really sleek but again this as you can see uh, is sort of a fingerprint magnet and it uh, gets the stains very quickly let's look at the back of the router and as you can see we have the power plug that goes in we also have a physical on off switch uh, your internet connection will go on this uh, yellow color port which is again a gigabit port we have four LAN ports again gigabit we also have a WPS button a reset switch and we have a USB 2 slot where I've uh, put a pen drive and we also have a USB 3 port and regarding the USB speeds I did test it for example as you can see I have this USB uh, thumb drive plug it's a USB 2 and uh, DLNA actually works very well on this and but regarding the USB 3 speeds I also plugged in a USB 3 hard drive the USB 3 speeds are sort of in the middle I would say in terms of read speeds I got some very good read speeds of around 45 uh, megabytes per second but uh, actually writes were a little bit slower around 25 uh, so still I would say pretty decent for a router but uh, before I give you my verdict how is the Wi-Fi performance and stuff let's look at the admin interface of this router and this is the login page and this also gives you an idea about the current firmware that you have and the hardware version and this model is also known as the DIR 890L and you just enter your admin password and this is what you see when you first log in and this gives you an idea if you are connected for example as you can see I'm connected to internet and it's been up for about uh, three days now it supports all kinds of connection like dynamic PPOP etc and uh, here if you go it shows us the clients that are connected if you just click on it uh, this gives you an overview of the clients that are currently connected to your network I also have one USB device that is connected I'll show you that a bit later and if you go to the settings you can enable the wizard to configure your internet or or uh, if you know what you're doing you can manually actually also set up the settings if you go to the wireless settings um, by default the smart connect would be on if you do that it will ask you for just one Wi-Fi SSID and password but I have disabled the smart connect because I actually wanted to manually configure the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 25 gigahertz band and if you disable that uh, smart connect it allows us to actually set up the two 5 gigahertz band for example as you can see the first one I have put it as this one and the second one as two what I have done is uh, for the secondary network what are my high bandwidth uh, devices for example my MacBook Pro etc I have manually configured it to connect it to this one but if you don't want to do all that you can always enable the smart connect option now if we go to the network uh, this uh, again you can change your subnet etc and the LAN IP uh, via this uh, so those options are there and this is the share port and this is basically for enabling DLNA server and I have to say the DLNA server works actually very well on this I have attached a thumb drive I've put some uh, what do you say video files on that and it was uh, visible to uh, the DLNA clients for example the WDTV that I have the Xbox console and I was able to stream video easily via that and it's very robust so the DLNA functionality works very well on this router you can obviously disable it if you don't want that and uh, you can also actually access this router remotely if you have a D-Link account so here you set up that now if you go to the uh, features again we have the quality of service engine here you enter your bandwidth what you have and you can just drag uh, whatever what do you say for example let's say this is your uh, let's say I want to give high priority to this Apple iPad I can just put it over here and leave it so this way you can actually prioritize the devices for example let's say this is my MacBook Pro I want to give it the highest priority so you can do that via 
via this option now if we go back to the features again we have the basic uh, uh, firewall uh, that we have we can enable it or disable it and we also have basic uh, uh, website filter and port forwarding option we also have the dynamic dns option so if you are using that you can enable those options if we move to uh, management uh, we can sh uh, actually do a little bit of scheduling if you want if you go over here you can add some rules for example, if you don't want the Wi-Fi to be broadcasting from, let's say, 2 a.m. to morning, 8 a.m., we can do stuff like that. And up to nine, uh, 10 rules can be added. And uh, we have the system admin. Here you can change your admin passwords and you can upgrade your router. You can just click here for check checking for the uh, firmware. And if you have any new firmware, you can directly apply it from here. And um, it also provides us basic uh, statistics. For example, if there is any network activity, uh, you can easily monitor it via this graph. So again, as you can see, it does provide quite a few options, but not very extensive. We also actually have uh, what do you say guest network functionality on this. And if you go to this guest zone, as you can see, you can enable the guest networks. But again, it does not allow us to, uh, let's say, restrict bandwidth to, let's say, only 10 megabits or something on the guest network. So guest network functionality is there and you can enable it on both the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 5 gigahertz band. Now moving to the actual performance of this router, uh, first let's talk about the 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, and the 2.4 gigahertz band is still very important because many of the legacy devices still rely on that and generally the 2.4 gigahertz band uh, provides larger Wi-Fi range compared to the 5 gigahertz band. That's the same. But again, in terms of the Wi-Fi range, I would say the Wi-Fi range was very average with this router. If you are expecting that you'll get great Wi-Fi range with this router, that is not the case. The Wi-Fi range was very average. I would say it could pr provide Wi-Fi coverage uh, for a flat around 15 to 1800 square feet uh, but if you have very big houses like multi-storied houses or larger coverage then this router might not be for you even on the 2.4 gigahertz band the Wi-Fi range was not good now moving to the 5 gigahertz band uh, which is the main highlighting point again Wi-Fi range on the 5 gigahertz band is not very high that's the same with this router generally it starts to drop uh, drastically after about 20 feet that's the same with this one and in terms of 5 gigahertz band the throughput speeds that I was getting were very good in fact as you have seen from the admin interface I configured two uh, what do you say Wi-Fi AC bands and on the second one where I had actually dedicated devices like my MacBook Pro etc I was getting very good speed so uh, this router is for people who have a lot of Wi-Fi AC devices and uh, if you think you are having some bottlenecks or something like that on the Wi-Fi AC network then a router like this where you have actually two separate Wi-Fi AC bands will help uh, that is to say if you have more than 10 odd Wi-Fi AC devices then this might be beneficial. Moving to power consumption it's very similar to dual band routers. Uh, it was consuming about 11 to 13 watts of power in normal day to day usage. Now, if we talk about the pricing on Amazon, this router was listed for around 16,500, which makes it actually a pretty affordable AC 3200 Wi-Fi router. Another thing that I like with this router is that uh, even with continuous usage, I did not shut off this router for seven days continuously. It was not overheating. So heat is not an issue with this router. But in terms of Wi-Fi range, the Wi-Fi range is sort of average. And if I have to actually rate this router, let's say five stars is the maximum, I would rate it 3.5 out of five. I hope you found this uh, video review helpful. If you found it helpful, I'll appreciate it if you can click the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video.